There's just something about the cars that BMW built. Take a look at this collection of motley cars. There's the recently released 7 Series, admittedly a step up from the previous generation. Then there's the ultra-polarizing X6. Some people hate it, even though it is a superb machine to drive. Still not convinced? What about the new 5 GT? Or the X1? They may not be people's favorite cars, but they're all talking about them. And that, to me, is always an achievement. BMW, like Audi and Mercedes-Benz and Renault and Kia and Toyota, make good cars. Okay, Toyota had a bit of a bad run lately, but you know what I mean. But BMW manages to consistently make cars that have an extra edge. They make people react. Not always positively, I agree, but the company obviously has an approach to their craft that we mere non-motoring industry executives can't understand. Instead, we look at their cars and say, ooh, I like it, or that's horrendous looking. Or in the case of the X1, uh, what is it? Before its release, Dion, for example, thought it would be like a big one series. As for me, well, I don't know. All the videos and pictures that I saw suggested that it would look like a small X3, but when the cars finally arrived at RPM HQ, it turns out we were both wrong. BMW are calling the X1 their urban crossover, which is a very fancy way of saying it's a big station wagon. If you're looking for a benchmark within the BMW family, it's most like a 3 Series Touring with a taller ride setup and beefier all-round look. It's a car that gets a lot of attention, although I'm pretty sure that's because it's the new BMW, not because it's anything special looking. The brown paint job has its detractors, but get used to it. It seems that this color, or various shades that are similar to it, are becoming popular with a lot of manufacturers, with Audi choosing it as their shade of choice for the R8 Spider. The best things about the X1 are the standout details. From the front, the headlights with their brilliantly aggressive stare, and the X-Line treatment, which is basically the silver bits in the bumper. At the rear, BMW's use of LED technology makes for another set of beautifully sculpted taillights, and the 18-inch wheels are just fantastic, which is the least you could expect of a 12,000 Rand option. So with a slightly bigger body, you'd expect more interior space, and you'd be right. Although there's not as much as you might think. The most obvious clue towards that is that there's no SUV-style retractable load cover. Instead, it's just a parcel shelf like you get in a hatchback. It's still a fairly useful boot, though. It'll swallow 480 liters, which is about the same as a Mazda CX-7. Life at the back of the X1 is more than pleasant, as long as you're not the one stuck in the middle, where there's virtually zero legroom thanks to the transmission tunnel. But being a BMW, all the best bits are reserved for the driver, and the X1 is typically BMW. Everything in here is familiar, from the layout to the iDrive setup to the orange illumination. It works properly and it's good to touch, but the X1 has got a few extra pieces that come at a price of course, that make it just a little bit better. Details like the fine line wave wood trim and the black and gold piping on the seat. Say what you like about beige being impractical, but it makes this comfortable interior just that little bit more opulent. Okay, it's time to concentrate now because there's lots of technical information to impart and absorb. Engine options in the X1 start with a 110 kilowatt S Drive 18i, which is a 2 litre petrol, and go all the way up to the X Drive 23D, which is a 2 litre diesel. There's also an X Drive 20D, which is a 2 litre diesel. Now, important things to note about the X Drive 23D is that it's only available with a 6 speed Steptronic automatic gearbox, and it's also only available in the four wheel drive configuration. For us, the best option in the range would be the S-Drive 20D, that's the 130 kilowatt diesel with two-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive setup is there almost purely as an added safety benefit, because let's be honest, the slightly raised ride height of the X1 isn't suddenly going to open up a world of off-roading to you. Did you get all of that? Well done, there'll be a test on this section at the end of the program. I find there's something very interesting about cars with a raised ride height. It gives you that psychological sense of security. Although the X1 isn't that much higher than most cars, so BMW can only call this driving position the semi-command driving position. Which is a bit odd, because it either means you're kind of in control, but not really, or you're only just a little bit higher than everybody else, so you can't do those things that you'd be able to do if you were in an SUV, for example. 
or is that just me being cynical? Whether being taller than other road users is important to you or not, the X1 feels solid, especially in X-Drive form. With all four wheels providing grip, together with BMW's typically marvelous ride setup and a stream of diesel power providing decent shove, you've got a setup that provides a great drive no matter where you're heading. We've been testing the all-wheel drive versions of both diesel motors. Uh, the power difference between them is 30 kilowatts and 50 newton meters, so in terms of power delivery, there's not much in it. But the ride setup is quite different. The less powerful diesel seems to have easier steering but harder suspension setup. But the more powerful one is exactly the opposite one. It's got harder steering but easier suspension. Both setups work when you're used to those characteristics, but for me, I'd rather have easier steering. The shift paddles in the X-Drive 23D are an option and they do add a little bit of convenience once in a while. Life in the X1 isn't half bad with a great interior setup matched to a drive that'll suit most people. And even if you wanted a different combination of steering and suspension feel, there's no getting away from the fact that this is a good drive. But the BMW X1 is not as earth shattering as I thought it would be, certainly not in the same way as the X6 was. It's still a very, very good car, but not because it's completely innovative or really exciting or amazing to drive. It's just very, very BMW. An even more powerful 2.0-litre turbo diesel provides more than ample urge to add a sporty edge to the new X1's delivery. The Steptronic box is great too. Add a taut but sorted chassis, all-wheel drive grip in this case, and the result is a thoroughly enjoyable driving experience. But first, you have to get used to the styling. 